Okay, fourth grade. So I told you we were going to take a break from our little tour around the world and we're going to have a composer corner session. Okay. Um, now, the two composers that we're going to be discussing are a French composer from the 1800s named Claude Debussy, whose birthday just happened to be in August. And our September birthday composer is actually a lady composer all the way from Germany. Uh, her name is Clara Schumann. She was actually before she even married a famous composer, her husband's name was Robert, she in herself was an extremely famous uh, piano player who toured all around Europe playing for kings and queens and was a amazing composer in her own right. So we're gonna take a minute and talk about each of these composers, give you a little bit of information, watch a few videos, and then when you're done with the lesson, don't forget you'll be taking your quiz. So let's jump into our August birthday baby, Claude Debussy. Okay, as I said earlier, Claude Debussy was a French composer. He was born in 1862 in the month of August over in France. Um, he began taking piano lessons when he was the young age of seven and studied music at the Paris Conservatory when he started studying music when he became 10. Um, now, <laughs> Debussy was, didn't consider himself your normal everyday composer. A lot of times when you go to school, well, back in that day, when you would go to school to become a composer, they would teach you the traditional forms. Um, basically, if it was good enough for Beethoven, it should have been good enough for you. Uh, but Debussy, he was, he liked to experiment. He liked to try new combinations of notes, um, playing around with different forms of rhythms, uh, he liked to try um, different speeds in the music, like it would be slow at the beginning, speed up for a little while, and then slow back down. So he was doing uh, a lot of new stuff that really kind of got him in trouble in school because he didn't follow the strict musical rules. Now, well, don't get me wrong, it is important to follow rules at school, but when it comes to music, it's these musical rule breakers that helped create music as we know it now. So thanks to his music and the things that he did and the chances he took and the experiments that he did with his music, uh, it allowed us to think in bigger terms of what music could be. Um, so he became fond though of music from the Indonesian islands. Now you guys remember we've talked about the Indonesian islands last week when we did our uh, song from uh, the Philippines because when we said the Philippines was part of this set of islands that sits in between South Asia and it's north of Australia. So you got all that that chain of islands, lots and lots of hundreds of islands right in there. Um, and he became really, really fond of this style of music and looked for ways to incorporate that sound into his own sound. Now, Debussy is known what we, uh, as a, an impressionist composer. Now, in the world of art, back in that time period in the 1800s, there were some artists, painters, who were painting pictures where it almost looks like it's fuzzy and you can't really make out what's going on. Imagine taking a picture with your phone and the picture turns out to be blurry, and but you're trying to figure out what's going on in this picture in looking through the blurriness. That's called impressionism. In impressionism, the artist in a sense draws a fuzzy uh, picture of what he's trying to uh, show to you and you're supposed to look at it and get the impression of what it could be. This could be a sunset. This could be a walk in the park. Well, with music, what they're doing is they've got a certain idea of a story or a mood that they're trying to create with their music. And what an impressionist composer will do is they'll use different sounds, um, to, to move that. So if they want you to listen to a song and get the sense that you are, let's say underwater, I'm just picking something off the top of my head here. They're going to create sounds that give you the impression as a listener that you are underwater. Um, let's say they want to give you the impression of a warm, uh, spring day. 
the birds are chirping, the sun is shining, the wind's blowing through the trees. It's just a perfect day. So what the composer will do is create, use his instruments to create sounds that give you that impression. Now, impressionism is not a lot of the time used with vocal music where they're singing. It's mostly used with instruments, um, with the orchestra, the piano, things like that. Simply because as a singer, you can say what you're thinking. You can like verbally paint the picture for them. But with instruments, because the instruments are doing the singing for the player, it's, it gives you more of an opportunity to really create some neat sounding uh, combinations of things. Now, a few more interesting facts about Debussy from the Classics for Kids website here. Uh, Debussy actually had a double first name, Akil Claude. Um, he dropped the, the first one and just went with Claude Debussy. He was actually born in a suburb of Paris. His uh, parents didn't at first notice his musical talent. It was actually his aunt. And so she is the one at age seven that helped him start getting, taking music lessons. Um, and the whole impressionism thing that Claude Debussy's tried to start doing with his music, he actually got the idea from visual arts because it was artists like the painters and stuff like that, that actually first started this style of impressionism. And so um, instead of the artists painting things that were lifelike, you looked at the picture, you knew exactly what was going on. There was no question. Um, very, very clear seen there. Impressionist would use different shades of color, um, thousands of little dots to give you the impression of what they want you to see, like I said earlier. And so Claude Debussy applied that to his music. So what we're going to do now is watch a short video by a um, YouTube channel called Five Minute Mozart. They do quick biographies on some famous composers. So let's watch this uh, short video to give you a little bit more about Claude Debussy. Claude Debussy was born on August 22, 1862, in Saint-Germain-en-Laye, France. He grew up in a suburb of Paris where his parents ran a china shop. At the age of 10, Debussy entered the Paris Conservatoire to study music. Despite his unique improvisational style of playing, Debussy was awarded the Prix de Rome in 1884. This now, the Prix de Rome stands for the Rome Prize. Um, this was an award that was given out every year to exceptional composers, and it was a scholarship where they could go move to Rome for three years to study music at some of the top music uh, universities and conservatories in Europe. This honor awarded him with a three-year fellowship to study in Rome. Upon completion, Debussy returned home to Paris and was introduced to the music of Richard Wagner. He was inspired by Wagner's works initially, however became more nationalistic and some would say even anti-German as his career progressed. This was due to the mounting tensions in the pre-World War I nations of Europe. In addition to Wagner, Debussy was also heavily influenced by Japanese and Spanish music, impressionistic painters Monet, Pizarro, and Cezanne. Now, do you see uh, some of the paintings? I'm going to back it up just a hair. And you see here how it's almost like someone took a picture out of focus. Um, it's, it's very fuzzy, it's blurred edges, it's not just straightforward, just clean edges where everything's very, very clear. Um, so, ooh, this is an exa a great example of it. Uh, think to yourself, what kind of impression are we trying to get from this painting here? Um, when I look at this painting, I'm seeing possibly a street, uh, maybe the sidewalk, some buildings, but again, it's not very clear. So each person may get their own impression from these paintings, hence the term impressionistic style, okay? This one is a little clearer as to what's going on, some dancers, uh, but again, f fuzzy lines, fuzzy edges, kind of a blurry picture. This would be another example of it right here with the uh, looks like fruit in a plate strewn on a maybe a tablecloth or something but again very fuzzy let's keep going 
and his beloved city of Paris, which was a hub of the bohemian lifestyle. It was here where, surrounded by artists and fellow musicians, even laundresses and prostitutes, Debussy composed his Suite Bergamasque in 1890, which features the famous piece Claire de Lune. Debussy married and had a daughter in 1905 and composed the Children's Corner Suite as a gift to her. His work is characterized by subtle, shifting harmonies and melodies based on chromatically enriched minor and major modes, as well as whole tone, pentatonic, and irregular modal constructions. Oh, that's a lot of fancy musical words for... He used a lot of different techniques in creating his music. That's what all that means, okay? Claude Debussy passed away on March 25, 1918, due to colon cancer during a German bombardment in Paris at the age of 55. Okay, so hopefully that gave you a little bit more information about Claude Debussy. Now we're going to move on to our September baby, Clara Schumann. Now, Clara Schumann was born September 13th of 1819. So she was actually born a good, almost 50 years before Claude Debussy was born. But her father was a man named Frederick Wieck. And Frederick, uh, Frederick Wieck was a piano player, but also owned a piano, piano shop. Um, so he sold pianos to some very famous people. Pianos back then were really expensive. Um, they're, they're pretty expensive nowadays, but back then they were like really expensive. Um, now, even before Clara was born, uh, Friedrich had it in his brain that he would have a child that would be so talented musically, um, on the piano that he would be able to tour all of Europe with that kid. So Clara's future was kind of predetermined for her before she was ever even born. Um, he had other children. She wasn't their only child, but when she was born, she, she was the one that he started focusing all his attention on. Now, interestingly enough, when Clara was first born, as she grew up, she actually spent an amount of time where she was not, I think for the first five years of her life, not interested in music at all. She really didn't even talk a whole lot. Um, but for some reason at five years old, she stepped up to a piano and all of a sudden can play. It's almost like all this stuff that had been around her, she just absorbed all this, this music talent and was able to play. Now, of course, she needed, you know, tutoring, which her ha father was happy to step in and start tutoring her. So throughout her childhood, um, her young childhood, teenage years, older teenage years, into her 20s, uh, she toured with her father all over Europe. They really didn't go anywhere without each other. She was kind of, a, he was kind of her manager, basically. Um, she pay, played for kings and queens and princes and princesses, uh, royalty all over. She also won um, the, uh, a prize. Oh gosh, I remember, I forget the exact name of it, but it was a prize for a virtuoso. And a virtuoso is someone who's exceptionally good at music. If you guys remember Mozart, if you had me back in second grade, we talked about Mozart. Mozart was considered a piano, a child prodigy like Clara, also a virtuoso at that age. Okay. So, um, she won a virtuoso award from a Royal court, which she was the only, um, woman to have ever earned it to that point. Um, now, she did fall in love with a guy named Robert Schumann, even though her dad was really against it. She, Robert was another uh, student of Friedrich's, but of course, Friedrich, his number one priority was Clara and her success. So he did have other students, um, but he didn't invest as much time in them as he did his own daughter. So through their time together, um, considering Robert had actually moved in with the oh, Weeks for a little while. Um, he lived in a, a room in the back of the, the house that they had. Um, so Clara and Robert spent a little time together. They would offer each other composing notes. They would look at each other's music and offer uh, tips on what they could do. Um, she played a lot of his piano music 
uh, for in public for the first time. She, she did a lot of that. And so just over time, they started to develop feelings for each other. And eventually they got married. Now, even though Clara's father did everything he could to stop this, um, they, they got married anyway. They actually had to go to court, take them to court so they could get permission to get married. But they are one of the best love stories of all music history. And I know you guys are sitting there thinking, ew, love story, gross. Well, yeah, they had a great love story. And out of that was a lot of great music. The year that they got married, Robert wrote hundreds of amazing songs uh, for solo singer and piano that just really transformed the way music is done for solo singer and piano. Um, Clara found herself uh, more energetic in her tours, uh, traveled even more. Uh, they did settle down though and had, they did have eight children together. Unfortunately, um, four of their children passed away um, before Clara had actually passed away. It's a very, very sad situation. Um, Robert even passed away in 1856. Um, 40 years before she did. He had uh, some mental health problems, uh, was actually in a mental health hospital for a little while. They called them asylums back then. Um, very, very sad situation to that. And we'll talk more about Robert at another time. I can give you the other half of that story. Um, but even after his death, she did continue to perform, although she really didn't compose anymore after his death. She did continue to perform. Um, very close, you know, before she had passed away in, in 1896. Uh, she taught for a little while at some music universities with the help of her daughter. Her daughter was kind of her teaching assistant, her daughter Maria. Um, so now what we're going to do is watch a video that's going to give us some more information about Clara. Okay, so this is one of my favorite YouTubers. She has a thing called Piano TV, and she often does videos about different uh, musicians. Um, so here is a section of a video that she did concerning Clara Schumann, give you a little bit more information. Here we go. Schumann is probably a name you've heard before. She's one of the best known female names in all of classical music, especially in the Romantic era because she was born in 1819. Now, if you're thinking the only reason you've heard the name Clara Schumann is because of her also famous husband, Robert Schumann, it didn't really work like that. It, it wasn't Robert who brought Clara into the musical fold. It was actually the other way around. Robert heard Clara play when she was just eight years old. He would have been 17 at the time. And he's like, wow, piano is actually super awesome. And he gave up his law studies to focus on music just from hearing her play. And then later they got married. It's kind of a nice love story. Clara outlived her husband Robert by a good 40 years and she had a huge performing career including a whole bunch of tours and then later in life when she wasn't touring as much she took up a post as a teacher in Frankfurt. One really cool thing about Clara is that she was one of the first performers to play entirely from this was rare at the time like no one really did that people would put on concerts and they'd use music but Clara now just real quick improvising is when you make up the music on the spot like you're sitting there at the concert and you make it up right there in front of everybody Mozart uh, was very very good at this technique it did everything from memory and that kind of created a standard for performers after her and it, it later is it's entirely standard practice to play from memory now but Clara was the reason for that. We wouldn't know about Robert Schumann today if it wasn't for his wife Clara because once after he was long dead and no one knew he existed it was her who just tirelessly promoted his music and put it out there that is the reason we even know it exists today. She was the one who promoted him and his music. And she was a really talented composer, as we'll see in a moment when we listen to a clip of hers. But the problem with Clara, they had eight kids in their family at one point, and between just like domestic duties and, and taking care of Robert, who was mentally ill, Robert Schumann actually spent the last couple of years of his life in an institution. She just she felt that she didn't have the time or the creativity to write music and this plagued her and it also plagued her husband Robert who was quoted as saying something like how how many awesome creative ideas don't come into fruition in the world because she's too busy taking care of him and the kids but that's just the way it was then you can get a sense of Clara's virtuosic piano style in her scherzo number no. two from her opus 14 collection it's a really fast piece and it has this like cool restless energy thing going for it the word
word scherzo actually means dance. is uh, just a little bit about Claude Debussy and Clara Schumann, two of the greatest composers from that time period. Um, normally when you're in fourth grade with me and I get to see you face to face, we have a wall where each class gets to pick uh, one of 10 composers that we do a little bit of talking about each month. It's really fun. Um, but with you not being here, this is what we're going to be doing just to uh, so you don't get behind on your composers when we get you back into the classroom. Um, so next week we're going to jump back into our countries that we've been doing. Uh, so far we have done um, a uh, Africa, we just finished Asia and the Indonesian islands. So next we're going to move into Australia before we jump over into the continent of Europe, okay? Because Australia is kind of its own continent slash country slash island all in the same thing. All right, so as always, don't forget that you need to take your quiz. So your qu link for your quiz can be located in the description below this video on YouTube. It's also embedded in the bottom of this week's folder on Schoology, and it is linked on my website on um, this week's thing. So no matter how you get there, just make sure you get there, get that quiz done, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, everybody.